If you're like me and your craft room has a ton of different interests in it, then today's video is for you because we're going to be going over affordable storage ideas for a multi-interest craft space. Let's go. Hello, I'm Noreen Burke, and this is The Crafty Organizer, where I love sharing tips on how to get organized, declutter, do some upcycling and DIYs, and pretty much anything that's crafty. Now, today's video is not going to be the breaking down of categories and organizing, although I do have a ton of videos on that. If you're interested, I'll have a few of them linked in the description below. But today is going to be specific ideas once you've broken down your categories and you're creating what I like to call zones in your space. This is when you have already done another thing that I talk about which is called the bullseye where the things that you use the absolute most are within arm's reach those things you use less are in the next level out and those things that you seldom use should not be in your immediate space they are on the outskirts and not taking up that immediate space for the prime things that you work with on a regular basis so once you have those things broken down and again I'll have all of those videos in the description below on how to get there this is going to be super affordable, creative ideas on ways to store those specific interests. Let's start with some overall craft room ideas. Now, if your room looks like this, first of all, I'm jealous. Second of all, I want to come live with you. But third of all, this is not the type of space I'm talking about. I am so in awe of people who can actually have a large room like this and have the budget to put in custom built-in cabinetry that's truly customized to the things that they're doing. I think that's amazing, and I hope someday to be able to do something like that. But for right now, I'm focusing more on the traditional space we all have. We're either making use of a craft room that doubles as an office or a guest room, or like me, you're using a section of your garage. If you're new to my channel, this space that you're looking at is just a bunch of bookcases that are resting in the middle of my garage. And if you don't believe me, there's my ceiling space of the garage up above. It's truly just a little fake room but it works for me. Our house is tiny, so it doesn't take up any of our necessary living space. So again, whether we're talking about a room that's shared or even just a corner somewhere, these are things that you can do. I love this room because even though it looks totally cohesive, it's the colors that are making it look like this. You'll notice this is just a folding table they have in the middle of the room. They have a desk in the corner, a couple of inexpensive cabinets, and I actually see these on OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace pretty often, and I've just recently discovered free, there's all kinds of names for it, some of them are good, expletive, uh, but I find people getting rid of amazing things all of the time. So look up good and see if you can find a group in your area where you can get some of these things at no cost. It's incredible, but if not, I know you can pick up things like this really inexpensively at thrift stores and a simple can of spray paint, or if you're into rolling paint out, you can make this look brand new, and that's what usually unifies the look of a space. Here's another example that's so similar to what I just did in my office. This could just be one of those hollow core doors, which you can get super inexpensively. And by just adding shelving above, again, what unifies it and makes it look like such a high end room is they've used the same navy blue color. Likewise in this space, this is a simple desk with some simple shelving, but they've unified the colors with just using this overall green in the background with pops of red. The last example, this was a corner in a guest room, and by just using the corner, they added just these two little shelves, one desk, and they had the little rolling drawers in the corner. But if you'll notice, the thing that unifies all of this are these pops of the teal blue color, even on the roll of paper towels. So if you're trying to make a small space look more cohesive, pick one or two colors and go ahead and recover things with scrapbook paper, wrapping paper, 
paint them, whatever technique you want to use, but by using just those one or two colors, it's going to give it that unified look. If you look at my background, the unifying color is that light blue that I have loved. It's always been my signature color. That means I can change the background of my bookcases, which I've done. I love that black and white toile paper that you can get from the Dollar Tree. But most recently, I just got this $10 roll of a backdrop paper from Hobby Lobby and recovered the backs of my bookcases. This makes it look unified, but everything inside is just broken down by categories. It's okay if it's messy because I have it in one box. So if you're struggling with your space, start looking at the fact that you might have multiple colors that's making it look disheveled. If you could just straighten up the colors and unify them with one or two, I promise you'll see a huge difference. Let's talk about one of my favorite interests first, and that revolves around paper. Paper storage is big if you're doing any type of scrapbooking, card making, junk journaling. It seems to be the foundation for so many different crafts. A technique that I think is wonderful is filing your paper. Don't worry about it bending over just a little bit. Most of the time, if you're using a filing system where the papers can stack up tall, they're not going to bend enough to make a big difference. But if you're worried about that, you can break it down by using custom magazine holders. You can also make these out of boxes super easily. And if you have a lot of scraps, I recommend breaking those down by color as well and having them near your paper so that you use your scraps first. The technique I use is just a Sterilite file box. I have my 12 by 12 sheet protectors from my scrapbook that I store all of my scraps inside and that doubles as a divider for my colors. When I finally switched over to this technique, I stopped wasting paper. I love how easy it is to get all of my papers and it actually helps me to get through them more because I always have it out so I see them and think about using it more. An item that usually goes in tandem with that is sticker storage. Stickers can be done similarly by filing them and having them broken down by categories. But if you don't like having them broken down in that way, you can also break them down by using binders. You can have large sheet protectors in here. You can either use the 12 by 12 or the standard eight and a half by 11, but this way you can have them on shelves broken down by the categories and not have to take up so much space. Another thing you can do using a very inexpensive towel rod is mount this on the wall and get some small binder clips or S hooks and you can arrange them either by color, by size, by category, whichever aesthetic works best for you, but this allows you to see them and have super easy access to them. Another very popular supply so many of us have in our craft rooms is paint. Paint storage will once again depend on whether you want to have it out and easy to access or if you want to have it put away in one space. If you don't want to see it, you can break it down into smaller boxes and just put it in a large Sterilite container. You can then put it up on a shelf. Be aware though, it's going to be heavy when you go to pull it down. So possibly having it on the floor where you can easily access would be great. If however you want to see it, these little Ikea spice rack shelves are amazing. They can be used for so many different things. They come in a lightweight pine, which means that you can stain them, paint them, decoupage them, whatever meets your needs for your craft room, but they are so wonderful to get tons of supplies in and break them down. You could also consider just making your own very shallow shelves so that you can get your paints broken down once again by style or color. You can also break them down by drawers. This works very well if you're using tubes of paint. And if you do have a lot of tubes, another wonderful method is hanging them by using binder clips. This means that you can just put a couple of simple nails or screws in the wall, hang them and have super easy access to them. And as a bonus, the paint is already at the tip so that you can get your paint out easily. Now, even though this isn't one that I am currently doing, I know this is a big one for so many of you. Quilting, sewing, having all of that fabric around is such a challenge in your craft space. One of the first things I'm going to suggest, even though I know it is time consuming, is fold those squares up. Consider where you're going to be storing it, whether it's in a drawer, on a shelf, in a bookcase, a cubby, a tote. Get a piece of cardboard, 
Measure it so it matches whatever storage space you're going to be using to hold your fabric. Then, yes, I know it's going to take some time, but fold all of your fabric that same size. What this does is it maximizes the storage space that you have, and then you can break it down by patterns, by color, or even by the amount of fabric that there is. But by doing this, look at how nice it fits inside of drawers or inside of cubbies. By breaking it down into cubbies, you can really see all of the fabric, but if you want to store it in totes, using that cardboard first will make it super easy to fold around. So turn on a good movie, start folding them up, you'll be finished in no time, but it is going to make such a big difference in storing your fabric. The next interest involves thread and embroidery. Now, if you've just got a small project, consider making or buying yourself a little holder to just keep everything in one place. But if you've got a lot more, I would start breaking down the threads by colors and keeping things either in a tote that you can carry so that it's all inclusive, but if this is the big part of your crafting, then I would start breaking down your threads into colors. You can use bigger boxes, but once again, if you're visual, a pegboard with these simple little clothes hooks will allow you to hang them and have super easy access. Or once again, you can get larger drawers and just simply break them down by the colors so that you can go through, find the hue, and have easy access when you're ready to craft. This next interest is one that I just tried recently. I'm on the fence as to whether I like it or not, but wool felting. If you like this type of craft, then you have a lot of little fluffs of wool lying around. I think the best technique I found for storing these is using a shoe organizer. I thought this was such a great idea. And if what you're doing is smaller, consider using one of those jewelry holders. This makes the squares much smaller, but you can also always break these down by using little Ziploc bags and doing a file system within a box so that you can just go to the color that you want and pull out those colors. I feel like the wool felting was the perfect segue into yarn. If you are a knitter or crocheter, then you know you have a ton of yarn lying around and getting it organized is sometimes a burden. I love this little crate idea. I think it's super cute. You can certainly break them down by color this way, but you can also just use a regular bookcase to break things down by color. The cubes are super popular, but what about using hanging shoe organizers. I love this idea. If you've got a closet where you can just hang these shoe organizers, you can break them down by, once again, the color or the materials. But one of my favorite techniques, and I've done this with clients, use the vacuum bags. Using the vacuum bags allows you to get them in. It's super easy to just vacuum the air out. It does not damage the yarn at all, but it protects it from moths, from dust, from bugs. If you're storing it anyplace else and get little critters, this keeps your yarn perfectly safe. All you have to do when you want to use it again is open up the bag and it fluffs right up. If you don't have access to these, the large bags that you can get from your dollar store work just as well. Close the seal, leaving about an inch open, and gently start rolling the bag up. This will press the air out, seal that final inch, and you will go from a giant thick bag to a nice flat bag that you can store conveniently. Speaking of storing conveniently, don't forget about under your bed. This is a great place to use those under the bed shoe organizers to get your yarn put away. And if you use the vacuum bag on top of it, think of how much you could store in there. Another popular item that I see in craft rooms is people who are doing ceramics and sculpting. Whether you're using traditional clay or that Palmer baking clay, having all of these tools out is essential when you're using this. So if this is your main craft, then this would be your bullseye. Have those hanging tools out where you can easily grab them and use them. Also consider small bins so that you can keep all the tools super handy if you don't have a lot of space to spread out. And if you've seen my video where you have that rolling storage cart, you guys, this would be the perfect use for your sculpting tools because you could have them laid out and then you could have all of the small clay items go into a shelf so they could dry safely afterwards.
I think the most universal supply that almost all of us have in our craft rooms is ribbon. I love having ribbon. I use it for gifting, card making. I use it to accentuate little decor items that I make. And sometimes I use ribbon just to hold something in place. Now, once again, with all of these, decide how you want it displayed. If you want it out in the open, some of these techniques that I offered are the best ways to not only see it and have access to it, but do it in a way that's really visually appealing. But if you do not like seeing your supplies keep this mindset of keeping them contained so that you can find them in there in one space but this little holder that used to hold the music cassettes do you even remember those is a great way to hold the small spools of thread I think that's super cute you can also get a basket if you don't have a lot, arrange them inside and pull the ribbon through the holes. This not only acts as a dispenser, it makes it super easy to access and it keeps them contained. If you have more, a simple system to create is two long furring strips, cup holders put in with a thin dowel that you can just Put all of your ribbon over the dowel and then hang it on those cup hooks. This is such an economical way to display all of your ribbons and have easy access to them. If you don't like your ribbon being on a dowel, I personally don't, consider making one of those inexpensive foam core bookcases. I've made tons of these. By making the shelves just deep enough to hold your specific ribbon and then putting a shallow strip at the front, the ribbon won't roll out, but when you want to grab it, you can just lift it right off of the shelf. This is such an inexpensive thing that you could make, probably out of just a sheet or two of the foam core that you can get from your dollar store. Do you remember these from the beginning? These are those IKEA spice racks again, and I just find them so useful for many, many things. But my favorite, and this is personally what I did in my storage room, is the gutters. These are rain gutters. This was such an inexpensive project. Mine cost me about $20 total because I wanted the prettier decorative end caps, but you don't need to have these in there. The rain gutters itself for a long strip was only $5. If you're interested in that, check out my video on how to do that wall storage super affordably. It was one of my favorite videos to do, and I'm still using that method right now. I know there are so many other types of crafts out there. Let me know what interest you have. If I didn't cover it today, I am happy to put together another video giving you tips and suggestions and showing you ways that other people manage these supplies. I love focusing on craft rooms because it's such a therapeutic thing to do. I really feel like everyone should have a creative outlet. Let me know what yours is. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I always want to give a huge thank you to my patrons. If you are enjoying my channel, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button. Give this video a like. If you were interested in seeing your name in this list with my patrons, that information is down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in just a few days. Bye.